Hey guys, Aaron here. I have a new custom knife that I want to show you. Um, this is a Zulu lockback uh, made by Enrique Pena out of Laredo, Texas. And I uh, just want to do a little video on it. I thought you guys might like it. Um, slip joint and lockback, more traditional folders, have been in existence for a long time. Uh, based on the research that I can I can come up with online, um, slip joint knives were first made in the mid to late 1600s, and the designs have been uh, improved upon and, and expanded since then. Um, most of these knives are based off of patterns, so makers would have a, a, a steel pattern that they would trace onto steel and use that as the template to cut out the different patterns, so a lot of these knives look similar. Um, a lot of the knives now are recognized as Tony Bowes patterns, Zulu Spear, Lanny's Clip, stuff like that. And if I recall correctly, I don't think that Tony invented the patterns more. I think he just kind of um, rediscovered and revitalized them and started making them more. And he is one of the most famous slip joint makers in existence now. He did a lot of work with Case and stuff like that. Um, so the patterns, like I said, were used to cut out the blade shape, the liners and the uh, spring. This is the spring part here. And um, once they were done there, they would fit the scales to them, pick out your shield, and kind of pin it all together. And uh, at this point, I've owned a number of slip joints from a couple of makers. I've had a couple from Jared Oser. I've had a couple from Todd Davidson. But this is my first lockback knife. Um, lockback, custom traditional, I should say. Um, and the primary difference that I can tell um, between a lock back and a slip joint is obviously the lock. But the way that it works, the construction is very much the same. So with the slip joint, the spring here applies tension to the tang of the blade, but the tang is shaped in such a way that when it's open and you apply pressure down, it is able to slip the lock up, and then it sort of pivots and slides along the tang until it closes where it drops back into position. Now the difference with a lock back, as you can see, you kind of see, the spring itself is sort of hook shaped, so that, and then there is a matching hook recess here. You can see how there's like a, a like a pocket milled out there, so that when you open the knife, the lock drops in, and then it's locked open. So essentially, they kind of pivot along each other and then hook together. And then when you press on the lock back, it lifts this up and allows it to pivot back along each other. Um, and then what, from my understanding, is there's a spring set in the tail here that is this spring that pushes it back up. Um, and it all kind of pivots along along the, this point. Um, for my uses and my practices, I've really enjoyed having kind of the added security and the added um, uh, strength, if you will, of the lockback. I know that this blade isn't going to start to slip closed on me. Most of the customs that I've had have had a half stop here, so you sort of have that added layer of security. But I do like having the lock on it. Um, however, I would not be against or dissuaded from purchasing another slip joint again. I, I do like the knives quite a bit. Um, this particular knife, like I said earlier, is made by Enrique Pena. He is out of Laredo, Texas. Um, the specifications on this are a 7 inch overall length with a 2 and 3 quarter inch blade. The closed length is 4 inches. Um, a lot of traditional knives, when they're listed for sale or, or ordered from their makers, are listed by the closed length. So this would be a 4 inch Zulu spear, or you could have a 3 and 3 quarter Lanny's clip or something like that. And that will be the closed handle length as opposed to the blade length. Um, I actually don't really know why that is, but that's just kind of how they're listed now. Um, the steel of the blade and the spring are CPM 154, and the weight of the knife, to all, all told, is about three and a half ounces. Um, as far as this particular knife, I'm a big fan. Um, the ergonomics on a traditional are really nice. It settles in the hand well. You have a slightly negative angle towards the handle that wraps into your grip. Um, the one thing that really sticks out to me in regards to this knife is that since it does have the lock on it, the pull on the blade is not um, particularly strong because it locks open. You don't need that spring tension to hold the blade open while you're using it. Um, I prefer this 
uh, with the Davidsons and particularly the Osers that I had in the past, um, the poll was quite strong. Um, you, you know, they usually rate them on a scale of one to ten, and they were one of them I had was like a solid seven. The other one was like a five to six. Um, like I said, I don't mind that about slip joints, but it is nice not to strip out your thumbnails trying to get these open. It's nice just to be able to um, easily open it like that. The blade on this particular knife is really impressive. The hand rub on it is nice and even, very attractive looking steel. And the grind is very, very thin. Um, makes it an excellent slicer, a really good uh, general use knife. Um, what I kind of foresee this as is light duty, office carry, slicing food, opening mail, packages, stuff like that. This wouldn't be, obviously, this wouldn't be a heavy user knife. Um, and I think that with the way that this knife is made, it would be incredibly easy to strop it to maintain that edge and keep it nice and sharp. Because um, it is ground quite thin, but you would be able to maintain this, this edge on it very well. Uh, the steel is CPM 154, which I'm sure most of you know um, will hold an edge um, adequately long and is easy to maintain. Good stainless steel. The handles here are lightning strike carbon fiber on both sides with a very nice seamless black G10 bolster. Um, it's got orange liners and the or orange uh, liners for the carbon fiber that rest up against the steel liners here. The pivot has, whoops, I'm dropping my notes. The pivot has 630 bronze bushings, and the liners themselves are mill relieved. Um, these are pinned together, so the construction on them is permanent. This isn't something that you could take apart and, and clean yourself, or, or um, you know, you couldn't adjust the spring tension if you wanted it stronger or something like that. Um, Enrique is making knives now that have full titanium scales and are screwed together with Torx screws. Uh, which is really interesting to me. I am on his list for one of those as well. Um, they're not cheap, but they are kind of cool. So, um, to kind of sum it up, I generally carry this knife. Um, oh, there go my notes. I generally carry this knife in a Chris Reeve calfskin pouch like that. That just prevents it from getting scratched up by my change and my keys in my back pocket. And I think it's a great addition to... Um, someone's EDC that already contains a larger tactical folder, something that you can pull out in the post office to open a letter with and it's not going to freak people out. Or if you work um, an office job, a desk job, somewhere where you don't really use a knife in, in, a, in a user capacity every day, you could just carry this and be, and be completely fine, completely capable. Um, I've done that myself. So that's all. If you have a chance to get some of Enrique's work, I highly recommend it. And uh, otherwise, check out some Great Eastern Cutlery or Northwood Knives slip joints because they're made well, and I highly recommend them as well. So I hope you like it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments. Aaron out of here.